Don't you just love these 12 volt Lego trains? Running some from the 1980s, although some of the track there is from the 70s. All three of these locomotives that we are running right now are from the 1980s. I love 12 volt Lego trains. So what we are going to do in this video is actually a re response to a question or a comment on a recent video. Actually, it wasn't even a recent video. It's a video from when I reviewed this set here, the yellow and red intercity train set 7740, I think that is. Yes, that's what the number is. We did it a while back. One of the all-time favorites, one of the classics you just got to have if you're a 12 volt Lego fan. But anyway, or if you're a literally 12 volt Lego fan, who is actually a YouTuber. <laughs> right. Anyway, let's look at what he said. He said, this is from Burt Pullman, who said, Can't there at least be one video on how to set up the 12 volt layout? Just one! Oh, I, I added that last part. 12 volt is so old, almost no one knows how they work. You'd have to be a Lego fan in the day when they were available. Well, that may be true for some people, but there's this real handy thing called Google, and there are a lot of good websites that you can Google, but you got to know which ones to go to. Not all of them will have the information you need. So what we're going to do here in this video is we're going to show you how I got three trains running with two transformers, and one of them had a European outlet. Not a European handbag. So let's turn these things off so it's not so noisy in here and I will show you. Okay, first of all, how do 12 volt Lego trains work? Well, unlike the power functions trains of today, which rely on batteries that transfer the energy from the battery to the motors, which look very similar to these 1980s 12 volt motors. In order for these motors to work, the electricity has to get from a transformer to the motor to make it spin. These do not use batteries. Now there were trains in both these eras with the blue track and the gray track that used battery boxes uh, that held three C batteries and then you had wires running over to the motors to make them go. This is a much better setup in my opinion but probably the 12 volt setup is the hardest of all the different varieties of Lego train track. Uh, but it's still, personally to me, it's, it's simple, but I like electronics and electricity and electrocuting myself, so it's, you know, it's no big deal. All right, so how does this work? Well, you need the wires, you need the center rails, you need the transformers, and an adapter track. Now, I have actually run these in some of my old videos before I had all my transformers out. I could actually just use any 12 volt DC supply and some wires and connect them to the uh, where they're touching the metal, and then that would work. Well, how this works is there's a converter piece on the this is the 60s track, but there's this piece here. It's a special piece you'd have to buy on BrickLink or something. Uh, to the to get the ra the rails to have the power. So these two little leads here touch the bottom of the track. Let me open this up. There's those little metal tabs. They touch that, and then that's able to transfer the electricity to the rails. So each rail you need two conductors to complete the circuit, and this side can never touch that side. Uh, if you do, you'll get a short circuit. So these two rails send the electricity to the motor. And the motor is, uh, there's different varieties of the motors, but they need some kind of contacts, and usually two to have continuity in case you go over a dead spot. One will always be touching. So there's two conductors, these little things here. and they're, they're, The reason they get, they're springy is so that when there's unevenness in the track, they, they will still touch. Uh, the conducting rail. So those touch there, and then when you t turn the battery, I mean, we, not the battery, the wire, oh, look what I did. Did anybody notice that? I put the wire on the wrong side of the rail. Hold on. All right, that's better, so we can make it go back and forth. Isn't that neat? All right, so how that's working is that wire is running, I'm running under these others. It goes over here. 
to this transformer right here is where it connects in this you have three different outlets uh, you got a variable DC volts then you got a 16 volt for the switch tracks and then you got a, a I think this three and a half 3.6 volts I think that's for lights and stuff I'm not sure so there's three outputs on this but the, for the trains you only you can only use that first one so this actually goes to a cord that plugs in here which is just a standard outlet for here in the US so that's no big deal actually I think this is a converter yeah I have a converter hold on see look at that it's a converter but this is 110 volts AC that's what that little wavy line is and so this output is 110 volts I do believe I hope it is yes output 110 volts that's all there is to it uh, you didn't need any special things if you were in here in the US but except for the way to connect the rails like I said um, this shouldn't be too expensive you just need the piece of track the special piece of track to get the voltage to the rails I hope that explains that as far as that goes with the blue track now with the gray track it's uh, very similar this one actually has an all-in-one piece you don't have to do an aftermarket thing well it's not aftermarket this is like they thought of this after the fact and this is a way to get the voltage to the rails but this is all in one piece with the gray it comes over here to the variable output on this gray power supply transformer and this one actually I had to <coughs> get this converter because this has the three prong uh, connector European style connector but there's also what I like about this one there's a constant DC voltage output right there 12 volts equals that means it's constant so what I can do is I can plug this in there oops it's the wrong way it's oriented the right way and it will apply, supply a constant 12 volt supply oh what happened there it goes it was in a bad spot hold on so what's going on this is just giving it a, <clears throat> a constant 12 volt supply I can't adjust the speed it's just that one constant speed but while that one is going I have this other wire hooked up to this track so I can run yeah this other train at the same time so both of these two trains are running off of this one power supply I have no idea if I'm overloading it and then I can use the third power supply to make the little salty looking blue train go and we got three trains running with two power supplies pretty neat of course I can't stop the uh, intercity train that's on the middle track with only what well I can stop it I just have to pull the wire out to stop it see that and plug it back in oh I love 12 volt trains all right so I don't have a ton of the rails in fact I used all but one of the the straight center rails for the gray I got a, I got more blue uh, that I can set up but the tables pretty much full I might could do one more loop on here actually but just tell me what you think of these trains we can run we're gonna be running more of these I do I would like to see how big a setup I could do with the 12 volt trains and get to using more of the crossings and the switch tracks you got boxes of the switch tracks oh, and I got more track too like there's more that's the curved center rails oops my train hit the, uh oh uh oh whoops my box hit it whoops <laughs> oops let me fix that so I've been sorting uh, so I got again the center rails I have those are mostly straight there's one crossing um, then you got the ties and the ties for the, the this is an improvement over the white ones because they have these clips that lock the track into place so it doesn't fall apart as easy but I've never really had that much problem with the blue and the white it's basically it's just a regular two 
by eight plate on the blue. Um, it's a little cheaper actually. Even though the blue is older, it's cheaper to build a big layout with blue track than it is with the gray. All right, here's some of my train track storage. I got 12 volt centers there. I got another box of these. There's some more miscellaneous tracks. These are the ones I just showed you. And here's some uh, four and a half volt switch tracks. Those don't do me as much good. I'd rather have the 12 volt, but if I'm running in, running battery trains, I can use those. There's some more, these are mostly curved rails. More of the sleepers or the ties. And this is a big box. This is full of the blue uh, rails. I don't know if any of y'all seen the video where the, it was the world record longest continuous train setup that they did. They did it in this great big auditorium where they just set up all this track and then it took hours and hours for one train to go. And I don't even know, if, I think the batteries might have died before it even finished and they had to change the batteries because it had to be battery operated because they used the blue track. And I think the reason they used the blue track because it is so much cheaper to set up uh, to uh, one piece of blue track is far cheaper than say the power functions or the nine volt track because these little tracks you can usually find them for a dime or less one rail so let's say you paid a dime two rails would be 20 cents and then you're just using common white two by eight plates so you one straight track you're talking maybe 35 cents at the most uh well depending on what you pay for it yeah i mean it could be more but for 35 cents for one straight that does that's so much cheaper than uh, nine volt which runs about four to five dollars for one straight and the um, power functions you're talking a couple of bucks uh, for one straight oh i got a bunch of that too i got power functions more power functions that's nine volt on base plates in there that's power functions that's nine volt there's some nine volt there and then this is i think the box of curve nine volt i think in there and i got more track with the sets so we're getting ready to do something with all this so i hope this overview has helped some of you maybe just some that were curious about how this works we love this 12 volt stuff we still have so much more to do with it we got uh, the remote control switch tracks to show you we got the lighting kits to show you we got uh, the decoupling track that doesn't work very well to show you uh, there's so many things that you can do with 12 volt that you cannot do uh, with the 9 volt system the the 1980s is probably the heyday of modeling with lego trains uh, they treated it more like a model railroad you had uh, most of the trains were just more realistic looking uh, most of them are based off european trains but they were like you know this one is always everybody always recognizes that one and they recognize the inner city train they recognize those steam trains i got over there so they're, they're just they're more like models instead of toys and the controls that you had and hopefully I can get around to showing you some of those where you can do remote control switches and you can have lights and signals. I mean, it's just, just like running a model railroad. So it wasn't as much of a toy as it is today. Uh, but I think the expense of making those tracks and stuff, Lego just, they went to the 9-volt system, which was in itself probably everybody's favorite. But to me, the, I just love this. Now, it would have been nice if you know they had used powered rails like most model trains but understand why they did this and it is not as pretty as a two rail track but it served its purpose and i just loved this era so anyway thanks for the question from who was that from bert <laughs> and if you have any more questions about trains we're going to be doing a lot more train videos here on briggs Art, and we'll see you in the next video bye Let's run these trains. They don't crash. Awesome.